Hello and welcome to a guide on Plasburst where I'll be showcasing and comparing different ways to deal damage to Imperial cruisers. Up on screen are the components. Ion Torp and Ion Missile synergize well with Plasburst's ability to burn cruisers once shields are down and to PK with the Ion Missile. Dampener Hull keeps me alive and importantly doesn't reduce maneuverability, which you'll see why that's important as we go, go through this. Ray shields recharge quickly and are super effective against lasers, which are the main way you'll take damage. And Chaff is the best countermeasure because of its area and duration. And Jet Engine is the best engine because it charges super fast, which is critical to this playstyle. If you're confused about anything I talk about here, make sure you've seen my guides on boost casting, throttle control, and advanced power management. I'll do my best to explain, but it's best that you've seen those guys already. So, because Plasburst deals maximum damage at 100 meters or less, the strafing method basically says, okay, we're going to get as close as we can to the ship for as long as possible and just unload shot after shot into the hull. This is pretty difficult, as you can see. Even here in practice, I'm having some trouble getting some consistent shots onto the cruiser. Kind of the method I'm using is trying to get a little bit above it um, with a boost and a drift, and then take some shots as I drift in, then throttle up to half or full, take some more shots, power to engines, you see I take a second here, it's pretty difficult to do, um, boost drift out and then back in and repeat. It's pretty, there's a lot going on here, you have to put your power to engines right before you finish firing your last shot in order to boost out. You have to put your power back to weapons as you get in and this whole time you're not really having any boost energy so it's a pretty risky strategy and as you can see I pilot error there and um, that can be that very quickly the second method is a loop so you can see I'm just kind of boost gasping looping all the way around the cruiser here this is much harder if you have any kind of latency so the first method is better if you happen to have a lot of latency this one is much more evasive and actually does a little bit more consistent damage as well. You can see I'm just timing my boost gasps to get um, to, like pinball across the cruiser. I picked the um, thin side of the neck so that I don't have as much of a chance of crashing. And so I just kind of I'm using the side of the screen to give me as much uh, visual as I can on the cruiser. I can see as much of it as possible because so I have a lot of warning before I end up crashing into it and before I need to fire. This one does about 450 damage per second when I tested it, maybe a little bit more or less depending on your skill level with this. Um, it's pretty it's pretty consistent to pull off. There's, there's not a lot of moving parts compared to strafing, but it does require some really tight power management. You can see I have a, like a little bit of extra boost energy here, but if I slip up at all, it's going to be pretty rough. Now let's go back to strafing and take a look at some of the some of the weaknesses here. So in this case, the turrets are not stripped, so it's going to be a little bit dangerous to actually um, stay alive here. So even with ray shield, if I stop for a second here to take extra shots, you can see I immediately go down to half hull, half, less than half shields. <clears throat> I'm boosting around here. If you do a drift, you naturally kind of stop and that can leave you vulnerable as well. And of course, turning around takes a lot of time. So even though you're shooting a lot in this moment, um, every time you turn around, that takes a while. And you see, I was, I was still moving, but the turret still got me at that point so could have boosted a little bit um, could have, and obviously it would be less of a problem if the turrets were stripped but they won't always be so that's just a risk to be aware of. Um, the strafing DPS is, when I tested it is about 375 for reference bur burst lasers do about 300 damage per second consistently um, so bur blast burst even with this method is still more efficient than um, the burst lasers so here, here's why verticality is important. Um, by dropping a little bit below the cruiser, I can shoot, I can point at the closer bits to me um, and get a little bit close, and I have time to get closer to it without just immediately crashing into it. And then I can start pulling up and still kind of skim it. But you see the turrets were stripped, but there was an invisible laser turret that would still get me um, despite 
uh, despite all the transmit strips. So watch out for that, it's very dangerous. Here's another example of looping, going back to that. Um, so in this case, this is my second attempt ever at doing looping with Blasburst, looping around the neck of that Arquitens Light Cruiser. I'm doing it face down for some reason. This is why you don't do it face down. I can't actually see the neck, right? So pulling up like before is a lot is a lot easier to do because not only do I have less field of view vertically, just because of the way screens are wider than they are tall, um, the cockpit's also blocking my view. So don't do that. Do this instead. <clears throat> um, you'll notice my some of my crosshair movements. Um, I kind of you can see the mouse cursor on the screen. Uh, right now it's going down as I'm getting more of the hang of it. And I'm kind of letting it go back to center for just a, just a moment right as I set up for my next boost and drift. But then as soon as I, but then before I even start the actual boost, I just pull back down on it so that um, once my boost drift has started, I'm already turning some. So you can see like, I'm just making sure that as I boost and drift, um, I have that torque. I'm, I'm, tur I'm already turning so I don't overshoot the cruiser. It's really important that you don't overshoot the cruiser, but it's also important that you kind of let go of it a little bit. See, I'm letting go a little bit here, back to center and back up, and back to center and back up, just so that um, I don't pull, I don't jump boost directly into the cruiser. I'm giving myself a little bit of space in order to um, in order to in order to hit it. And here I mess up a little bit, I give myself a little bit too much too much space, and I don't quite make the shot that time. That's okay. It's more important that you don't die. You're already doing more DPS than with burst lasers anyway. Um, obviously, every little bit helps, but not dying is better than uh, crashing in there. Here's some more of it. Um, with some turrets up, again, no problem. Um, it's really, really hard for the turrets to hit you most of the time. Um, you'll see later in the out of phase bit, they do, they, they are still dangerous, but for the most part, they won't hit you. And there's a, there's a bit of a mistake there. So I ran out of power there, I believe, and um, did not... Um, did not respect the boundaries of Eslis, so watch out for those obstacles. It usually won't be a problem, but some places like the ring on Tsubo, um, or this map, if the game goes long enough, the cruisers do get pretty close there, so watch out. And there I pulled up too hard and crashed. Um, we'll showcase the out of phase for a little bit. Now as for competitive viability, I actually think Plasburst in competitive can be okay. I think it's something that's really much better if you're much better than your opponents, but this kind of shows that it still has some advantages as far as cap chip DPS, just a, just a little bit of an edge over burst lasers. And if you can make it work for you in PK, that's also great. I'd just be wary that you can still contribute to um, the PK game without getting too wrapped up in it and not being able to really assist people if you get a little bit tilted. It's very easy weapon to get tilted with. And so that guy, um, we still took a couple of laser shots, so that's why the shields were down to 50% from that invisible turret. So watch out for that on the out of phase. And it means strafing doesn't really work on out of phase because of those invisible turrets. Here's the other one. We're taking a lot more laser shots this time for some reason. It might be that there's no AI X-Wings and so the turrets are more targeting you. But just be aware that the um, it's a lot riskier to out of phase a cruiser with turrets up. See right there, down to 60% HP, there's my shields gone, and dead. Alright, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Um, this was Venkar, signing off. Have a good one.